Welcome to the Engineering Update. I'm WDD's Editor-in-Chief Janine Mooney and in this week's episode, Chip could turn smartphone cameras into high-res 3D scanners, the world's smallest electric wheelchair, and driverless vehicle makes a cross-country trek. Imagine if you could scan three-dimensional objects with your smartphone and send a high-resolution 3D image to a 3D printer that will then produce hyper-accurate replicas. Soon this might actually be possible thanks to a small and inexpensive device developed by scientists at Caltech. They have developed the NCI, a nanophotonic coherent imager with a 4x4 array of coherent pixels. In the proposed NCI, on-chip optical processing determines the intensity and depth of each point on the imaged object based on the instantaneous phase and amplitude of the optical wave incident on each pixel. The NCI uses an array of tiny scanning laser beams to gather information about an object's size and distance away with an optical concept called coherence. The detection of both intensity and relative delay enables applications such as high-res 3D reflective and transmissive imaging as well as index contrast imaging. If scaled up to house arrays of hundreds of thousands of pixels through a camera lens, NCI could find use in improving motion sensitivity in human-machine interfaces, driverless cars, security, robotics, biomedical imaging, personal electronics, and more. Children born without the ability to walk face numerous challenges, but one of the greatest tragedies is that motorized wheelchairs for children are prohibitively expensive, costing upwards of $15,000. And this doesn't include all the necessary modifications to your home to accommodate a large chair. But for a pair of brothers born with spinal muscular atrophy, help has arrived from Brigham Young University. Five undergraduate mechanical engineering students from BYU's engineering capstone program spent over a year designing and testing what they deemed the world's smallest electric wheelchair, and fortunately for the two brothers in need, the world's cheapest. The students used a 20-pound PVC pipe frame capable of supporting up to 50 pounds, and a cost for the batteries, wheels, motors, the electronics needed for a joystick controller, and a padded seat, $495. That's a bit more realistic for your average cash grab family who can't afford a normal motorized wheelchair, even with healthcare. The engineering students also posted their plans to the Open Wheelchair Project, so presumably families with just under $500 and a bit of technical skill could build one of their own. There has been a lot of enthusiasm and quite a bit of criticism when it comes to self-driving cars. They have proven themselves capable on shorter trips, but Delphi has undertaken a whole other challenge, an across-the-country road trip. Actually, to be fair, they've already completed the 3,400-mile journey, which took nine days total. The car traveled, with an engineer in the driver's seat just in case, from Treasure Island in San Francisco across 15 states and Washington, D.C. to New York City. The vehicle has six long-range radars, four short-range radars, three vision-based cameras, six lidars, and all the ADAS bells and whistles a car could want. Those systems allow the car to navigate in all sorts of traffic and weather conditions, including construction, traffic jams, mountains, and deal with aggressive drivers. The car, called the Roadrunner, completed 99% of the drive in automated mode, and the team collected about three terabytes of data along the way. This is the first coast-to-coast -coast trip by an automated car, and in addition to helping future driverless vehicles, will also help improve safety vehicles in regular cars. The Delphi team has already done some shorter range testing in California and Las Vegas, and the car was capable of tackling four-way stops, merging onto highways, and making sure to give pedestrians and bicyclists a wide berth, which is more than I can say for a lot of human drivers. However, this long-range test allowed the team to test out the vehicle on a more challenging and continuous route. That's all for this week's episode. Be sure to check in on Facebook and Twitter and catch past episodes on ECNMag.com. For the ECN channel, I'm Casey Panetta, and this has been your Engineering Update.